Welcome to Be Kids Time. We're so glad that you joined us today. We can't wait to grow and learn with you. Oh, excellent. I'm glad you're here. I'm Professor Frank Einstein. I teach Bible 101 for monsters here at the community college. It's finals week, and I could definitely use your help grading their final exam. I'm going to read a Bible question, and I need you to tell me how many monsters give the correct answer. There will be three monsters at a time, so just shout out zero, one, two, or three, depending on how many monsters get it right. Remember, sometimes all the monsters may have the right answer. That would make me so proud. But on some questions, all three monsters may have the <gasps> wrong answer. So make sure you pay attention to all of the answers very carefully. We've got a lot of papers to grade, so we've only got 10 seconds to spend on each question. Everybody got it? Good! Let's bring in our first three monsters. Looks like we've got Martin, Misty, and Melvin. Name a book of the Bible from the New Testament. Remember, guys, just shout out and let me know how many monsters give the correct answer. Looks like we've got uh, Matthew, Mark, and Genesis. Okay, time's up! Melvin! I thought you were paying better attention in class! Genesis is in the Old Testament! Well, two out of three isn't too bad. Let's bring in Amy, Susie, and Sergio. Name a book of the Bible from the Old Testament. Okay, so Exodus, Ruth, and Psalms. Okay, time's up! Everyone was paying attention! That makes me so happy! All three of these books are in the Old Testament. Okay, let's bring in Harold, Guinevere, and Leopold. Name a book of the Bible from the Gospels. Looks like Revelation, Matthew, and Joshua. Okay, time's up! Oh, Harold, Leopold! You guys know Revelation and Joshua aren't part of the Gospels? That's okay. Way to ace that one, by the way, Guinevere. Okay, these last three questions are going to be for the advanced students, so the questions will be a little trickier. Name a book of the Bible that is between Genesis and Joshua. All right, we've got Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. Okay, time's up! Oh, very well done! All three of these books are between Genesis and Joshua. I'm so proud. Okay, let's bring in Ron, Stephen, and Peter. Name a book of the Bible that starts with the letter I. Looks like we've got Ichabod, Isaac, and Issachar. Okay, time's up! Oh, no! None of these names are books of the Bible. Come on, guys! Isaiah is the only book of the Bible that starts with the letter I. We went over this last week. Okay, looks like we've just got one question left. Let's bring in Heidi, Will, and Napoleon. Name a book of the Bible that is named after a woman. And we have Ruth, Esther, and Rahab. Okay, time's up! Oh, so close, Napoleon! Rahab is in the Bible, but she doesn't have a book named after her. Well, that was a big help! Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping me grade those final exams! That was quite a monstrous task, eh? Oh, I kid, I kid. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. 1 John 
Sometimes I like to tell stories to my children. 
I'll tell them about when I was a child and my aunt would take me and my siblings to a nearby college campus to get root beer floats from their cafe. Or how I used to find American Indian arrowheads and my dad would carve tiny wooden canoes to trade me for them. You may already know that Jesus told stories too. They were called parables. Parables are stories that tell us spiritual truths. We're going to talk about three parables that Jesus taught about people who lost something and rejoiced when they found it. Jesus told these three stories because he wanted the world to know that God redeems. Redeems means to buy back. So one day, Jesus was out teaching a large crowd where people of all different backgrounds had gathered to listen. He welcomed everyone to come. There were religious leaders called Pharisees there who were very strict and didn't believe everyone should be welcome to worship God. They were upset that Jesus had allowed everyone to hear from him. They didn't understand that God redeems, that he buys back those who are far from him, even sinners and tax collectors who were hated in that time. Jesus heard the Pharisees complaining, and that's when he told the three parables. The first story was about a lost sheep. A shepherd had been out with his 100 sheep, and one of them became lost. The shepherd left the 99 sheep to go find the one lost. When the sheep was found, he rejoiced. He said to his friends and neighbors, rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. That shepherd certainly loved his sheep to do what he did. In this story, the shepherd represents God. He rejoices when the lost are found. The second parable was about a woman who had 10 silver coins and loses one. Jesus said she would light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. Like the shepherd, she says to her friends and neighbors, rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. Jesus told this story to help his listeners know that God, what God is like. The coin represents something valuable in this story and we are valuable to God. In the third parable, a son has asked his father for his inheritance. The son then leaves home to go to a faraway country where he spends all his money with wild living. He ran out of money and became hungry, declaring that he was starving to death. The son made a plan to return home to his father. The father saw him coming and was filled with compassion and he ran to hug and kiss him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father didn't believe that to be true. Instead, he threw a feast for his son, welcoming him home. The father said he was lost and is found. Let's have a feast and celebrate. In this story, the father represents God. Jesus told these parables to the Pharisees for a reason. He wants to teach us something too. In the three stories, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son all represent things valuable to those who lost them. Jesus told these stories to teach the Pharisees and us about God's heart for the lost who are people who don't know him. God wants to redeem them and buy them back so they can become his children. God loves all people and wants them to know him and be in relationship with him. Imagine you had three puppies and one wandered away and got lost. What would you do? Would you forget about the lost puppy or would you make sure the two puppies were safe and then search for the, for the lost one? You'd go in search of the lost puppy. And when he was found, you would celebrate. Rejoice with me, I have found my lost puppy. We call people who don't know Jesus the lost and when they choose to trust and obey him, the Bible tells us that God and his angels celebrate in heaven. These people were lost in their sins, but have, found, but have been found by God when they accept salvation. God has redeemed them and brought them back. Jesus also told us these stories to invite the Pharisees and us to join in the celebration. Why should we celebrate? Because God redeems, so let's rejoice. you made the choice today to be part of God's forever family, we just wanted to pray with you. Lord, we thank you for each kid who made the choice to be part of your forever family today. God, we pray that you would help them to learn more about you and to live their life like the Bible says they should. In your name we pray. Amen. We are so excited for you that you made that choice today. If you haven't made that choice and you want to learn more about it, you can ask your parents, you can ask a grown-up that you trust that knows about Jesus, 
or you can ask one of your leaders for kids ministry. We would love to talk to you more about Jesus and his love for you.